Hi, in this video I will show you how to use Osmand, which is in my opinion the best app for offline maps and navigation. First we have to install it. Go to the Play Store or to App Store, search for OSM and, and then hit install. Now I'm doing this on Android and I'm recording this on Android, but on iPhone you have all the same steps. Uh, all the same buttons, it kind of looks all the same, maybe some buttons are in a bit different locations but uh, all the steps should also work on an iPhone. Now because we want to use it offline sometimes we need to download maps and the app when it starts up already suggests to download the local map of Stockholm County uh, 77 megabyte. A full map of Sweden would be a 1 gigabyte or so I should also show you how to download maps custom way. So hit this menu in the bottom, the hamburger menu, and then hit download maps. Then I click Europe and then Sweden. And then here I can download the entire map of Sweden already, or I can go and browse through the uh, subregions. If I hit one, I see the contour lines are not downloaded. So I want them as well. I choose meters of course, because meters are the best, and then hit download. Now I have both standard map and the contour lines. Now notice after I close this menu, because it's the first time I've installed contour lines, it would suggest me to add a new plugin, uh, which would allow me to show contour lines. It, it already says it's enabled, and I can just click OK, uh, which means that the plugin is now uh, working. If I zoom in, I can see contour lines, but they're barely visible. In the moment, we'll learn how to change their appearance. But first, let's fix the orientation of the map. Hit this compass icon on top left. Now onwards to tuning the appearance. As I said, the contour lines are barely visible. So hit this top left icon with the walking human and then so go to contour lines and change color scheme to, for example, dark brown. Then, when you close this menu, you will see that contour lines became much more visible. Okay, let's change more settings. Again, hit the top left icon with the walking human, scroll all the way to the bottom and then hit details here. Here I would prefer to show more details, show road surface and road quality. I also hit nature reserves for some reason, but uh, you can play with these settings and see if they make the map more helpful or more cluttered, in which case then you remove them. After that I scroll a bit up uh, until I see hiking routes and then I enable those and I hit this settings, the three dots uh, menu next to the enable button. Here I can color them differently by network affiliation or by OSMC. OSMC uh, tries to follow the same colors as you have on the trees, on the marking on the trees. But here I choose the color that is more visible so I see it from far away uh, on the map. And now in the forest you can see where the main trail is in, in very bright color. The app currently doesn't show me where I am, so I need to enable the location. If I go to the app menu and I hold on the app icon, I can hit then app info and then permissions. Here I can enable the location. The app itself doesn't ask for location by default. Okay, allow when using the app and then we can return to the app itself. Now it would show the blue dot. That's where I am now. To make the map more useful, I prefer to add more map layers, and some of them can be taken from online maps. So here if I hit map sources in the appearance menu, I can enable online maps. Hit on, then in the appearance menu I can go to overlay map, enable that one and choose a map source to show overlay on top of the map I already have. Now these options would be different for every country you're in 
And I prefer here in Sweden to use Lantmeteriet Topo. That's the Swedish topographic map agency. Also make sure you have this show transparency seek bar enabled here. That will help us to change the maps, change between two maps on the fly without opening any menus. Here is the seek bar at the bottom. I'm dragging it left and right now. But nothing changes. That's strange. Here I'm trying to restart the app, uh, start it again, go and change the profile to hiking, drag the, these um, map blending slider left and right, and then I finally realized that I should hit the map sources again here in the list. I'm still thinking here in the moment. And now when I hit map sources, I can switch to Landmeteria Topo as my main map. That's a weird, very weird practice, but I switched to main map. Now it's on Landmeteriet map, as I can see visually, so I confirm it visually. And then I switch to offline vector maps and exit the menu. Yeah, check the overlay. And now as I drag the slider left and right, I can switch between the two maps now that I have. One is the one that looks like paper map, that's from Landmeteriet. And the other one that looks like digital map, that's uh, offline OSM and uh, map itself. Yeah, so uh, the online maps, uh, they are indeed paper maps. They are not available on uh, all zoom levels. So sometimes I have like a better quality, sometimes I have worse quality. And sometimes you see there's like boxes here and rectangles that haven't yet loaded uh, from the online map. So sometimes these map services uh, can be rather slow. Here is a good example. A piece of map didn't load yet. But if I wait just a bit more, then it then it comes in. And sometimes I can even, uh, I even like to blend the two maps together and keep the slider somewhere in the middle of the transparency option, if that's helpful. Okay, next exercise. Now I want to get my coordinates and send them to a friend. So here I need to tap on the arrow or the dot, that's my, my location, drag this menu upwards so I open the drawer and here I have my coordinates uh, at this spot that I clicked in all possible formats. I click one of them and it's copied to clipboard. Now I paste these coordinates just as usual in the chat. I can also paste them in any other map service because these are coordinates in usually other map services. They also accept coordinates as a search request in many different formats. Here I paste the coordinates in the search bar of Google Maps. And it centers the map at my current location, which is home, so no surprise here. Okay, next thing, points of interest. This is a really great value of OpenStreetMap. You go to appearance menu, click POI, so points of interest, scroll all the way down and hit tourism. Now they would appear on the map in this yellow orangey um, circles with icons on them. And I want this viewpoint to the north of the lake. Here I hit viewpoint and then I scroll up so I get the drawer up. I copy the coordinates of the viewpoint to clipboard and then I can also paste them to Google Map to see if Google Map can recognize these coordinates and find that location, which it does, but weirdly enough it doesn't show this marker that Google Map usually uh, shows when I search for coordinates. Now, since we are in the walking profile, we can click this icon and then hit navigation there in the bottom. So, accept this uh, keep active of speed cameras, that's the uh, legal, uh, legal warning. And here we have navigation in uh, different styles that we can have. We can have car, bike or walking navigation and when I hit walking it navigates me through the forest and through the small little trails that connect to each other and those you would never have on Google Map. Uh, Google Map is never uh, 
detailed to such a great level of detail. So this navigation can take you in the forest on the small trails. I can then hit analyze on map. So these are the uh, like preferences or details of that navigation uh, situation. And then I choose to show only altitude and here by dragging the a marker on this area chart I can find what's the highest point uh, this is the highest point elevation wise um, on my route to that viewpoint so now let's say that I'm not satisfied with that highest point and I would also want to include a mountain in my trail so here I find this Jommerhöjden mountain and then I click add an first intermediate destination and now this uh, navigation route it, it's now rerouted through this mountain and if I click navigation options and analyze, analyze on map choose only altitude now I see that the highest point of my line is uh, now that mountain close to the viewpoint I can also switch from altitude to show me uh, slope like if I interested how much effort I would uh, do to go up or how dangerous it would be to go down and now I can also analyze the slope uh, gradient some locations can only be found by search otherwise it's too hard to search them on the map let's look for this pizzeria deli Italia in the search and we discover that there's many search results that look and, and they're named exactly the same and if I hit the first one of them I would assume that it would be the closest one to me but this is the wrong one see it's near center of Stockholm so instead I click show on map that's how I can find the nearest uh, circle points of interest um, Delhi Italia to me and I can add this point on top of my navigation route that I already have so I just select add subsequent destination when I try to navigate there instead of replacing the destination and you can see it takes us through the forest through first flag the mountain the second flag the viewpoint and finally to Delhi Italia saving locations one great feature of this app is that you can save locations secretly on your device without sharing them with Google or Apple or anyone else. So if you hit one point that you like, such as this shelter close to the trail we're passing, then you can start it, add star, and then you hit save. And now this location would be visible even if you zoom out really far, like this green area is the map of Stockholm that we've downloaded. And then as you as you zoom in it's still there so that's also a good way to let's say star a, a, a some point of interest some location that we um, like to be more visible than on all the other other orange spots so here we do something more custom we hit uh, the finger and hold it on the end of the trail here by the lake and we want to save a custom favorite spot which wasn't on the map before I write lake access so that would be our bathing spot for the summer when the weather becomes really warm and we would like to go swimming so here we switch to blue color and we go to uh, let's say this icon uh, like a bathing spot and here now it's saved as a bathing spot for later and you can see it's also visible from far away so now we have two spots that are saved as favorites the basing bathing spot and the 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 shelter and the final feature I would like to share is recording tracks so here we need to enable a custom plugin it's not in the appearance menu it's in the bottom hamburger menu uh, there we go to plugins and then we select trip recording and we press on so now this plugin is on and now we can see rec at the top right uh, we can see appeared appeared there, there is a new button rec at the top right 
I can change some settings, some appearance of how this uh, recording track would look like and I can also change logging interval, how uh, uh, frequent the measurements will be taken because that influences the battery. Uh, so 15 seconds is good to save some battery and now we start recording and since I'm in the building at the moment we can use the drifting of the GPS to see that the track is actually recording. So I'm not moving anywhere but the drifting of the GPS uh, did the track for me. Now I hit stop recording and I save this name of the track. I can hit open so I open how it looks. Here I can edit my track, I can change the appearance, I can hide it from the map and so on. And I can also hit options and then share and again I use my uh, message app of choice telegram to share this file to someone else who is a fellow explorer friend of mine. That's it. I hope you enjoyed this little presentation. Hit the like button and subscribe.